Okay, Sunday, November 13, 2016. Uh, this morning I woke to another earthquake in New Zealand. Uh, ring of fire, and we also have the supermoon. So Mother, Mother Earth, please don't squash us. <laughs> uh, well, it's just a matter of time, right? I'm not an actuary, but, you know... Ooh, what do we know? Five mass extinctions on the planet. So let's just get through Sunday. Um, uh, I'm thinking about doing a live deal here Sunday night. Uh, uh, a lot of folks like the, like the live videos. Other people are at work. I guess it does work out. From I have to. I'm going to say at least 90% of you that Sunday will work out uh, in the evening for most of you. Um, some of us will be working, you know. So. That's why I record these things. Okay, starting off, these are North American indexes. I'll run through this real quick. Hopefully I can keep it under 20 hours. <laughs> so uh, Canada, and this is uh, weekly. So this is going back a long time. So this is venture. This would be like the over-the-counter stuff. Um, down, this is basically a bounce. I'm treating everything commodity related this year as a bounce and I'm using previous history from the uh, like the 19 uh, coming off of 1980 high just use the past see the behavior um, I don't think this is a, a new thing going forward at best for the bulls it'd be like a shoulder another head and another shoulder here's the pivot on it what it would what it would be would be interest in Canadian natural resource stocks things of that nature um, I mean, like I said, I haven't looked at it. I just use this as a uh, reference because of uh, Canada is our number one trading partner. And um, uh, I have to keep an eye on all of that. Uh, if you lose your largest trading partner, uh, if you lose it, you need free trade. Just that's how, if you begin to be isolationist where you put up walls and stuff, that's not good. Um, the deal is to keep the money flowing. Um, if, it, if you hoard the money, then it becomes a shortage. Um, I'm going to go through bonds. I sent some stuff out to some people who asked last night. Uh, there's a period in the 90s when we didn't issue 30-year bonds, and that kind of helped out the stock market and the real estate market in particular. Um, you had to create your own bond, right? Uh, for the real estate. No competition, as they say, when government raises interest rates, corporations and stuff have to compete. And that's why we'll be seeing here that the uh, utility index is not being a happy camper. But right now, uh, this is a stochastic on a weekly. This is uh, the MACD. There is a way of using them in conjunction, like when they both bottom out kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but in this case, this is why I don't like them. <laughs> I mean, the stochastics. This is markets move sideways the majority of the time. Even though this is walking down, you can see that there's a large sideways pattern. There's a large sideways pattern, sideways pattern. And remember, these are weeks. Okay, so a large sideways pattern. So if I drop this down, if I kept the weekly and a daily together of this, the, the signals would coincide where there's a low risk opportunity. Unfortunately, you're looking at stuff. Uh, not a very good one here. i just probably pick the top, but it, you know, you have to take these things. You just you flip the coin, you put in how much you want to lose first, and then you find an entrance, and usually it's coming to you, so you can always wait for it to break out on the upside. This just hit a moving average. It came close to the horizontal uh, support area, um, but it just, like I said, this is just a bounce. And when the technicals usually don't line up, um, that, te that tells me it's not a very good structure either on there. Um, the computers have to be programmed with everything. They're going to be programmed with pivots and moving averages and yada, yada, yada. And then it'll sniff out when you should get a volume spike. You know, you get a register that in this area you should see a volume spike. They, these are uh, volume bars. There is a fat one going into the moving average. But basically I look at this as that, uh, I think commodities are coming down on, in general. The other thing um, is there's going to be a lot of, it's probably happening to you, <laughs> of, of 
the information that you're, you're absorbing. Like if you want to be bullish gold, you're going to try and find the bullish gold story, that kind of thing. And that's where that cognitive dissidence comes in, where you look at the trend at best, this thing is sideways, but the trend is down and this is for years. Okay. Um, I just think in general, how it works is the dollar gets stronger in commodities, the little more difficult uh, uh, to sell because of um, the dollar. It makes things worse when the dollar clears 100 okay, on the dollar index. That's going to start adding. So if it goes up to 103, 105, your, your cost, just trying to export them alone are up 3 to 5%. So you have to figure something, make the packages smaller. <laughs> Toberone, make the packages smaller. Um, you know, we've all seen inflation through the year, you know. Uh, what's coffee now? I think coffee here is metric, right? You know, one pound can, two pound can, that kind of thing. Cans, Kevin, it's plastic. Uh, boxes of mac and cheese, you know, eight ounces, now seven and a quarter, six and a half. Uh, cans of tuna, six ounces, I remember. Soup cans, the old 16 ounce, oh, it's now 15 and a half. Orange juice bottles, 64 ounces to 59. That's your inflation. Um, but I just think with stronger dollar and uh, uh, move, the interest rates are moving at a clip on the back end that uh, we're going to have difficulties for commodities for the next few years. I think the bottom in oil will show up prior or near the uh, obvious recession. And then that's the one I'd probably buy into. Uh, it'll be, you know, anything under 40, I'm going to track oil down and then trade it by uh, fives, but I'll probably trade it off the percentages on the way down. Um, 40, 35, 30, but it'll probably be, you know, like 33, 32, certain numbers that it hits because eventually the volatility will die off. Uh, oil will find its happy place. There'll be everything, right? This is this is business and this is economics. We have stuff on supply. It's it's whatever we put into the marketplace, like um, uh, maple syrup. <laughs> Since we were on Canada, maple syrup. All right, so uh, Nasdaq Composite. Okay, so this is a weekly chart of the composite. This is the, the total index here. All right, so. At best, we have a larger sideways pattern, okay? Usually on the upper end here, it's distribution, okay? Or uh, this area, I will lean for the bulls. If this is like a retest of uh, the top here. Do, 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 do. Okay, just sloppily put them in. That's why I like uh, using these pivot lines and stuff. Um, they're also helpful for markers too, like down here. They kind of here's here's three years of pivots all within a certain area. Um, underneath here, if the Nasdaq continues to, to trade higher, the angle of ascent should increase sharply. Why? Because when you go have a sideways pattern, it's like a spring. You're tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening it. Okay, then the energy gets released. But if the NASDAQ goes below uh, last week's low, okay, uh, what do we have? 51.20. Okay, how about we just say 51.50, that kind of thing. We'll remember it. Van Hagar, 51.50. All right. There's, there should be a sharp precipitous decline, okay? Because to coincide with other indexes also breaking down, i.e. the Russell and the Dow Jones, okay? Uh, the volatility last week, usually when you have volatility, like we, we've seen recently, you have trend change. And because we're in a sideways pattern here, the, the, the bulls don't have much to work, um, much to do to keep this thing alive. And the NASDAQ was running and overall stock market in my eyes is gonna double again by the time the, the real estate peak comes comes through, okay? So uh, yes, I'm looking for some sort of hard whatever. Uh, we've seen in 1997 and 98, we've also had 15 point drops when long-term capital management blew up and the russians defaulted watch your oil watch your gas um, 
so you know we, whatever i i don't know why it happens that this, this chart doesn't show anything i'm just looking at the the results just think of this as an ekg or an eeg in my case Ew. all right so the bulls don't have much to, 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 to hear friday's action was kind of um interesting in that uh it came from the Dow, which is a cheesy index in my eyes, and um, uh, the Russell, okay? The, so you're telling me, you know, to, to follow this one, you're telling me that interest rates, um, you know, running to the moon something fierce is good for these little guys? You know, that's here nor there. Like I said, I think it's just a lot of short covering. Uh, it's the weekend. Do we remember how, you know, Thursday went and Wednesday went and Tuesday night went and Tuesday before and, you know, what did I send out? Now what? <laughs> now what? Before, <laughs> before all the fun and games. Uh, sock that away. Take snapshots of your screens on your big winners and your losers and what you got out of this one and, and, and figure out what it is. But basically, you have to, what you have to do is if you want to stay in a trend, you have to have something running on it. And here, like with this one on the weekly on the NASDAQ, this is a 200-week moving average. So this is some whatever. It's a, just a cheap trend line. And the nice thing about this one is, is as the market is actually moving sideways, it's advancing. So the, the amount of distance between the two of them, that would be like an MACD. The distance between the two are narrowed. So uh, this is, a, I, I will give moving averages credit for during this time period here. That it, in theory, it should begin to get up to, towards the pivot area, which was going to help out going forward here into the late winter and early spring. Um, stay on your toes, but basically, it's, it's the, the deal is, is if the Nasdaq breaks out, you have to go with it, okay? Um, there are target numbers up here, like 6,900 and things of that nature. Now, I'm, I did mention that 1997, when uh, long-term capital management blew up in Russia, the stock market fell 15%. It was able to run, okay? The NASDAQ was able to double while having consecutive 15, you know, year after year, 15% pullbacks, okay? We think of, uh, you know, 15, 20% pullback as the quote-unquote bear market, okay? If you look at a lot of other stocks that they've been beaten up pretty hard, you know, we don't, how many times do we talk about a bear market here? You know, basically a lot of these indexes are being pulled up by a few names in Friday's action in the NASDAQ, um, uh, the 100 on the queues. That was just a, a, if these are the leaders, why aren't they leading, right? The wrong things are leading here. So, uh, you know, be cautious. I'm still saying that, we're going to trend lower, uh, same type of volatility, um, which is good for the market. That's what I'd like to see. Okay. But if this continues up, the angle of ascent in the NASA composite would increase uh, sharply here. All right. But we still have to get through Sunday night. Oh, that's why we're doing the live thing. Okay. Clear. Uh, Pointer guy. Okay, so here's the Dow Jones composite, this is the 65. This would have the utilities, which is not going in the right directions. It has the, the transports, which are finally getting some attention after, what, two years? And then the industrials, which has Nike. Uh, actually, I should say things like Polaroid, Kodak. <laughs> you know, just look. No, not anymore, but they used to. Okay. Basically, what I have here, these are um, just lines broken down for the channel that we're in. I'm going to just say that this is double top. This says it's 2014. So this is uh, taking some time. Okay, we're marking time on here. The, the deal is, is you have to go with it. If it breaks out, you have to go with it. And then you just trail your stop on a daily basis at a low you know, don't make it too obvious. But what I like to do is like the weekly. I mean, this is the weekly here is very far away. If, it, if I get tagged out, I better be short two, right? If I'm long one, I want to be short two down here. If we get a full reversal, because then I think we're going to head down to S2 on these weeklies, okay? So that's looking forward. We're still, I, I know this stuff looks bullish. That's fine, but it's, it's the risk, right? You know, it's all about the risk. You know, I'm. It's not as much as 
I'm, I'd be I'd be more interested in buying down here than shorting up in here. Okay, that's how I that's how I look at it going forward. Looking on a macro scale, where are we in this? What do I think is going to go forward for? When you get older, you can talk about decades <laughs> because you've squandered a few of them, right? All right. So the same thing at best. It's a large sideways pattern. It needs to break out. Any weakness out of the gate, shoot, whatever. Tonight on the futures, it's, you know, uh, I, having access to market and liquidity, it's just you'll it'll drive that way. If you're strictly an option stock options person and whatever, you know, you you missed out on the downside. You you, you couldn't buy anything on the upside. You know, the other thing you can do is uh, if you have enough and you open up a futures account, you can play the options on the futures too. So you can go and throw. Uh, we'll just use the, the S&P 500. Um, that one's 50, 50 bucks, right? So uh, if it's seven points, it's 350 on the option or 12 points is $600. Uh, you can do spreads on there and that kind of thing. But whoever you have for broker, blah, 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 your costs, um, if you're paying say five bucks round turn or less, uh, you can get away with it because of the tick is 1250, okay? 1250, 25, 37, 50, you know, 50 bucks. So you can, if you buy in at um, 2140 and want to get out at 2140 and a quarter, you'll still make money on the round turn deal. So you can get your feet wet that way. And then spreads will widen though, unfortunately with the options. But what I like to do is play it in $5 increments. So what I would do is I would, um, I would say buy uh, the 2140, put okay uh, at the money or side I anticipated it for like five and then uh, it drops to 2135 so the S&P drops five points and then I would sell a, uh, a put against that and try and collect anything over five say like towards eight that kind of deal so I've, it's basically free trade I bought the 40 for five I sold the 31 the 2135 for eight and I collect the difference, which is three minus commissions, and it's the offset. Okay, in the, in theory, you might have to fine tune at the end, but in theory, okay, that that's basically a free trade. You got your money back. You just have to watch it, and then you just you just go from there. Okay, <clears throat> but that's what I like to do with the options. Um, there are certain times when certain things work. High volatility, if you're long or short something, then you want to sell the options for the volatility to dissipate. Um, it, you know, for like right now with the VIX being low, those are the things I'm looking at. I mean, Kevin, you're talking about, you know, new all-time highs and, and certain indexes. Why would you be buying puts? It's just the mechanics of it. It's, it's Look at it as a hedge against your core portfolio that you may have been holding for a long time. You know, it's it's not as much as on the speculation. It's you know, like VXX down at the lows, you just start scaling and buying on the VXX. Buy a chunk at this rate, to buy a chunk lower at this rate, and a chunk lower at that rate. And that's the thing. Your portfolio is going up. You know, in in general, in theory, tide lifts all boats. Just, you know, but you have to, I mean, if, if, if silver's at, in, at a, in a 20 year bear market, it's at $3 and 50 cents, you shun it. No, you have to go in there and buy it when the opportunity presents itself. So in my case, VIX and stuff traded under 15, you know, the VIX futures, you know, you buy it, you know, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and then you sell it on the way up like 16, 17, 18, and we almost got to 24. So no one came back the other way. I'm like, okay, hold on a second. I can do this a second time, you know, and you, you have to come in, but just think of it as a hedge on the short side. If, um, you know, if this, if the double top here holds and we get some sort of reversal, uh, right out of shoot, uh, Sunday, I expect all of these to come down to S2. Uh, same thing again, this is just an, on a daily basis, but you can just see it advances sideways, not much of advance and a lot, you know, sideways here. So, uh, which night is nice here is you, it's closer. There's not as much risk if it comes through, but just start setting some alarms down here, uh, for any type of reversal, just like we saw with how quickly things moved in the, uh, Russell 
you know, some of you that didn't have never traded Russell futures, you just did kind of deal. You just gravitated towards it. Um, here is the Dow Jones weekly. Okay. Uh, no, Dow Jones world index. It's a weekly. Okay. So this is, this is the whole kit and caboodle for earth here. And this is how I look at it. Um, what I've done here is with the peak of 2015, okay, so the world's stock markets peaked in 2015, all right? And I kind of, I'm not a Elliott Wave technician uh, by far. I don't even know if this, maybe this is called a running flat or something, I don't know. Uh, I have it just marked down as an ABC and then an ABC pattern again and marked it as a one and a two and would expect the world indexes uh, to come through we talked about the moving average. I'm not a big fan of them. It's just a lazy way for me to draw a trend line. But you can see that from the lows here to the moving average, and then this is the pivot for 2017, it's real simple to flip it. You know, if you're long equities, what have you, uh, if it loses uh, last week's support on the Dow Jones World uh, Index here, uh, I would say it's going to, there's going to be a precipitous decline down here. Okay, uh, we have we have the cross of the median line here. S one when we get there, if we get there, whenever, then we'll discuss it. But basically, that's how I ha I'm looking at it. Um, you know, yeah, it, it, it peaked in 2015. Everything would have to everybody that was weak would have to get on board. On the next video, I'll go over uh, global indexes. But for right now, a lot of these, which is nice for America, is watch your cash indexes and just put your line across there. Futures are going to be a little more extreme because the ranges are wider here. Good for traders that are on top of things. Bad for people that stall and have to process. It's, this is mechanical. Okay, you don't know what. You don't care. I'm wrong. You're wrong. You know, whatever. The, the market's wrong. Yeah. All right. So the cash stuff, put your stops and uh, reversals underneath here because I truly believe that if we take out everything that happened last week, it's, there's going to be a big drop. And it has to do with the, the, the makeup of the market. You know, we talked about, uh, what was it, two weeks ago in the video? Or, oh, that last week. Yes, last week. Going from S2 to R2, okay, and that's basically what a lot of these index did on the daily basis. So you you cleaned out shorts, you have longs that have sold, you have the, the market makeup uh, on the futures when I do the futures video. You can see that they went running back into the futures, okay, so sideline money, whatever, you know, if this is going to continue, it's going to have to continue. But what I've seen in a higher, what I've seen in the, the bond market and stuff, that's going to, it's a little too violent, okay, for things to work out. And I've started doing spreads on uh, ratios of like interest rates and stocks because you get to a point, we'll just take the world index. The world index is basically dropped. All you basically collected was dividends. Okay. You may have had capital gains, whatever, if you added individual positions, what have you. But in theory, right? So you peaked out in 2015. In theory, even a negative interest rate, um, uh, it's probably if the negative interest rate was less of a loss, there you go, then then your capital gains even buying debt, which is quote unquote safe, right? Um, the first to get paid in bankruptcy, et cetera, sovereign debt, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You get to you get to a point here where you say, okay, maybe I'll want to buy some sort of Disney bonds for four or five percent or whatever. I haven't looked at anything. New issues are gonna come and they're gonna have to be uh they're going to get priced pretty good here. We're at a time of the year, though, that this shouldn't be happening. But this is also deja vu of last year. Uh, maybe we have the same type pattern. When everyone talks about it, it doesn't pan out. Like how we strolled through October, uh, uh, basically in the bounds. But November 1 is, to, you know, open up the chute. Let the little doggies out. So, uh Whoops, that would be a bad reference. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> you open up that shoot of little bulls or steers, you know, and you're bearish. No. 
Well, my bias is very cautious of the downside. I personally would like the greed kicks in. I'd really like to see a sharp decline so I can buy into banks, insurance, home builders, autos, things of that nature, because the economy will upswing again. But in, in larger terms, then you have the 10,000 people a day that go on Social Security, but we're only making three or 4,000 jobs a day, you know five, six, whatever, you know, thousand. So just the, you have a tipping point there. Um, and we'll deal with it. And of course, once again, I, uh, the largest holder of U.S. debt is Social Security. So those who have jobs now should notice a little bit of a benefit <laughs> in their numbers and their statement on Social Security, you know, because they're getting interest again. So... Uh, but that there's a little period of time there where I don't think there was much interest. Um, uh, student loan debt for, for Social Security, you know how it goes. All right. Uh, so the World Index, uh, this is an Andrews pitchfork, basically from a high and, and a low and a, and a bounce. I just put this here as a reference point. Um, but anything underneath here, I think, you know, we're going to get a precipitous decline. On here, again, it would probably be a, a double top. But this is on a world basis. So the world is going to have to, you know, they're going to ha have to change on a dime just like us. And you can see on the next video uh, with interest rates that German and, and Japanese and their, their interest rates are moving higher too. Um, uh, here's the Dow Jones Industrials. I love this index, right? Okay, nothing like masculine what's going on in the backside. Okay, so I kind of just drew in a trend line. Maybe this is a retest here of um, uh, of the trend line, you know, to broke the trend line and came higher. Um, and Okay, so mechanical, under the lows, okay, American indexes because they had, it came back into uh, the trading zone, okay, stops below last week's low, and I'd look for full reversal and down to S2 on these. Uh, here's the mid cap, a fat bar here, so this is f fresh uh, meat coming in. Um, you're going to need to continue a uh, continuation the same thing uh, to get this to break out higher um, same thing again stops blow here and if it, if it fails basically lose the pivot just just the type of behavior that we had the futures we cleaned out a lot of folks we springboard on the upside um, but that could be it for like the, the jet fuel or in motorcycle motorcycles it has that whatever it's called the blast or something that or I can't remember the name. Power band. Good Lord. Okay, power band. Uh, you hit that thing. Basically, it's the same thing. Overdrive, whatever. But you, then you run out of steam and it just collapses on itself. Okay, so that's... This, yes, it's mechanical. goes up. You, you buy the breakout. You put the stop underneath and you just you keep riding it. Just like the moving average here. Yeah, landed on the moving average. Usually, I treat this as a buy. This is a retail. This is support, which obviously did in the beginning of the year. Um, and now the same thing again. Anything through here, it's just going to collapse. That's how I'm leaning. That's mechanical. So here's the Nasdaq. This is a weekly Nasdaq 100. Okay, undecided bar. Okay, you would figure with what you saw in the Dow and especially the Russells that the NASDAQ, which was the leader to the breakout to the upside, would be part of it. And this is your Amazons and your Googles and your Facebooks and your Netflix and all these other, f your FANG, right? We, we did, this is a NASDAQ 100 and we, we now put it down to four. <laughs> okay, we're, where's the rest of them, all right? Those are the little pink dots and stuff we talked about before uh, in the previous video, okay? That if we see any short covering there, it should be in the, the, the smaller ones. Why? You, greed is the first thing. If you can, you know, if you have X amount of dollars, you, if you have $510 in your account, you're going to try and buy a $5 stock or 492 or something to that degree. So you end up gravitating. New people that come on board gravitate. Okay, uh, this 
we'll say that at best, okay, at best, is that it, it did hold it, it's undecided, it can pick up. So by, by Monday morning, uh, trading-wise, we need to be trading up on here. They, the bulls had a really good run last week structurally, okay, overall for what they the, how they pulled it out. Um, we're, we're assuming that those are bulls. Maybe those were all the shorts that just ended up buying it the other way. Couldn't believe you could go from you know, S2 to R2 in a week, you know, and it, and it did. So in my, you know, I, I'm going to remember that one for a while, but um, they need to, they need to continue on. Okay. But this Friday's close here was just, I was a little bit like, well, you know, the Russell was pretty strong and then the NASDAQ didn't. So the Russell must be short covering and the Dow, maybe Nike's coming out with uh, new shoes or something, but you could have a, a shoulder ahead and another shoulder here, and these are weekly bars. Okay, the best part is is you're you're just underneath this draw across here, uh, underneath before pivot. What is that? Forty six fifty or whatever. Uh, that would be reversal in my eyes. This is this is just one two three count in LA wave. It's usually a five count. This to me is like a one two three. Just the sideways. The stock market's long. Interest rates are moving blah 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 i don't need an excuse i just don't like the structured look of this thing but if it does break out and goes higher uh you have to take it and put your stops underneath it on the breakout so that's a 200 point stop right okay but uh that's how you'd look at it you buy the breakout and you put the stop underneath and you just trail it up and i like to use it by weekly bars so if i bought somewhere up in here i would, I would use last week's low and just sit tight and then move the stop up for on every breakout. And this is a weekly, so you know you're going to have to think about you know buying March contracts if you do futures, you know that kind of thing, uh, or the queues. You know. But what we saw with you know with the election with the damage that was done, it would be kind of awful though to be in the queues and then have it swoon again, and and then there's no support. And then you're kind of out of it. So I, like I said, I do try and get access to markets um, if you can. Uh, and the deal with futures and is with the leverage. Um, same thing with the currencies. Uh, but there, are, there are other ways of not getting stuck in positions. And I recommend that you look into them. To me, a chart is a chart is a chart. You can put any name on here. It's just, it's basically just the psychology of the market that's all i'm looking at when the angle of ascent is sharp okay that it tells you something what you know what is the behavior on that that they didn't want to buy it all through here but they had you know that they would be willing to buy it lower okay that kind of thing so it's it's all about the psychology and you know if you've taken physics or something the momentum is kind of waning here okay that's why I said if there's any sort of deep discount, I would like, uh, I'd be interested in buying. I'm, like I said, I'm more interested in buying than selling. Uh, but I would, you know, I need a discount. <laughs> At best for the bulls, what we have is we just draw a line across here and we just say that this was a retest, double retest of the breakout. But it would need to hurry up and uh, get some follow through. Uh, you know, the weekend is going to, because you know the momentum stops in the Nasdaq and or in the uh, Russells and the Dow, so we we have to you know if Sunday uh, we have people just a lot of people just sitting there that would work out with that in the indecisive week. Not sure. Okay, same thing again. Larger sideways pattern. At some point, the trend is going to break out. So if this goes, it will continue higher. Okay. Uh, if it comes down, I don't think it, it can hold it anymore. Okay. Here's the pivot of 4,500, you know, and now we're down to 3,500. That's target. Next targets on the way up about 51 and change and 55 and change 5150. Oh yeah. And we'll say 5550. So 400 points up there on the upside, uh, 200 point stop trailing. You'll tighten it, whatever you, you can stomach. But think about that one, you know, the total amount of the index, yeah, 200 points is a lot, but dollar-wise, percentage, there you go, for the total contract, not just the margin. 
Uh, da, 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 da. All of these grouped together up in here. So, you know, it's had a pretty good run, right? You know, it's had a pretty good run. Um, but just just be very cautious on the breakout. And this is the spread between the NASDAQ and the composite. Uh, this, and as it swings higher, tells that the NASDAQ is uh, the 100 is outperforming the uh, overall, and now we have a turn. So basically, you could look at it as that's where the, the small caps were running, okay, compared to your, your big, large caps. Uh, your fangs uh, are not faring so well in relationship to uh, stocks that have fallen from 80 to two bucks, we'll say. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Next page, please. Next page. Thank you. New York Stock Paid blah, Composite. Um, once again, peak in 2015. It's decent amount of volume in here. Moving averages, same thing. Underneath the low, it would probably drop uh, from 10.4 to 8.2. On the upside, um, this is the pivot uh, for this uh, this year, and this is S1 and S2, the dotted lines here. So those would be your targets. Okay, I also use previous years targets too. Okay, just it's there. If it's all mechanical at one time, if the computer said this is a number, this is a number, this is a number, but now it changed, I would think of this is a number. This would be previous. This, you know, if it recaptures what it lost momentum wise, these would be the targets. So I use those too. Okay. The angle of ascent probably wouldn't increase as sharply here. It just kind of a slow stair step marching on because uh, these are uh, all the conglomerates. Okay. The only way I could see that happening is if the dollar came off pretty hard. Uh, OEX, this is, is going to be your 100. Um, uh, what do we have for days, weeks? Okay, because of the, the wide range we had this week, these targets are, are out there, okay, for the pivots and stuff. And that's why I also use the other ones. Um, if next week we have uh, Thanksgiving. So uh, there's a little bit of wait and see in the marketplace too. So the OEX, here we are at, uh, this is the pivot, this is R1 are two for this year and then next year's targets okay on the and the pivot pivot is nice moving average is nice once again under this week's low on these cash indexes it goes below it i'd reverse it and look for r2 on a weekly basis uh russell 3000 okay so this is they're in chunks um same thing again you know if it breaks out uh, the angle of ascent should increase because of the it's like a rocket ship right now, right? They're just they're chasing after these things something fears and that can get infectious also This time of the year I remember a few symbols that are like a X N P or something like that You know uh, They're monkey business, okay um, so there will be a, a lot of that going on too. Um, it won't take much to bully these things, especially when everybody else is just standing around, you know, what, what do I do? What do I do? I'm not sure. You know, the market looks up. He says it's going down. You know, that's where you have to come in. I usually go off of the gut instinct here. Uh, Russell 100. Okay. Same thing again, you know, you know, raise your, raise your, you know, if it breaks out here, then your stop goes here. Okay. Um, that's basically how it goes and it keeps you in. And, uh, but if you get any full reversal again, you know, this whole week here, it's going to, we're going to get a full week before a holiday weekend and things are going to become a little more clear and obvious things, you know, I mean, uh, you know, signs, you know, I was, like I said, I was in Needles, California, and they lost their, their Denny's, and they, you know, they, they lost the Taco Bell, they lost, and I'm like, okay, is this a sign of something here? You know, location, location, locations, you know, if you have millions of people that drive by you, uh, you know, and it doesn't work out, you know, what do you have? You know, is this, a, it, you know, if, uh, if it's the worst place in California, you know, and it's, and it can't survive, you know. Taco Bell on 40, you know, that kind of deal. So um, it, 
it's kind of like the, the the stock market peak uh, it peaked in um, uh, real estate peaked in December 2005, but the stock market didn't peak until uh, a little less than two years later, about uh, what 20 months or so, uh, October of 07. So are we in if if the economic period, you know, we saw with the, the global stock index has peaked there and we're going, we're moving on, this could be our uh, 2007 again, okay? Um, you know, let's go look at the rates of the 30-year bond, you know. I recommend people to get a 15-year mortgage because then uh, you get rid of PMI, sneaky little buggers, and then shop for insurance companies, blah, blah, blah. And then be able to support, so if you buy a home, make sure you can live off the, the one person that has the job, you know, uh, not two, one. That's, if the real estate cycle is 18 years and you need a 30 year mortgage, the bank can come after you uh, at least twice for a real estate cycle. And then, um, then you have your individual recessions at uh, between four and eight years. And eight on us would be uh, from 08 or 09. We are here, but I'm I'm looking at it as our Great Recession was uh, also a Great Depression, and I have to go off of what happened back then. Economically, everything we the people, you know, if the economy is muted, the tax revenue is down, and then we're not spending; it feeds on itself. So uh, you get what you put in. <laughs> is how I'm, how I'm looking at it. So, all right. So that's the Russell. Same thing again. Like I said, underneath this week's lows, and then it breaks out. You have to go with it, uh, but move your stops. And Russell, here's the old Russell here. All right. Same thing again. You know, we're, we're aiming for a breakout here. Uh, you know. That best a larger degree sideways pattern. This has been a lot of energy stored in here, uh, but watch out for a double top on this one. Um, you know, the whole reasoning why. Why was it so strong? You know, here's the, the mid caps again. You know, those were, these guys are the ones I'm looking for on any swoon, okay? Because it's, it's during that same period of 97, 98, 99, that's where I think we're at at the, the, going into the recession, that's the type of behavior, the extreme behavior that I would be looking for, okay, going into, for how long we are, how far we've walked this thing up, uh, you know, everything, you know, $2 gasoline or buck 80 gasoline, how does that help out the economy, you know, it keeps it humming along, you know, that's, that's how I'm, I'm looking at stuff. Everything will, you know, will fall into place. Uh, uh, get the stronger dollar means, you know, the 95% of the world's over there. So repeat trading the dollars is a problem. When you have it going to, you know, think of it this way. Dollar goes to 103, 105. Your, your cost, your, 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 you know, what your FOB, what you're delivering is, is up. And then when you repatriate the money, it's dropping as you're waiting to get paid too, right? You know, so you double whammy, the conglomerate's not it, but you want the little ones here. And most of it's service technology. I mean, it doesn't take much, right? You know, uh, people are making 10 grand a month, putting makeup on while drunk, on the YouTube, <laughs> so it doesn't take much access to a, a camera, you know, entertain content, entertainment. Uh, same thing, you know, like I said with the Russell and stuff. If it breaks out, uh, I'd have to say this would be massive short covering here. Um, but on any swoon, that's what I want. I want growth stocks uh, for. Uh, and not as much as your Amazons and your Apples and your Netflix and things of that nature. I want, I want ones that are, are on the upswing, not mature companies. Uh, it's the type of behavior is what I'm looking for. Because uh, we had record amounts of merger and uh, acquisitions and IPOs were kind of waning here. What do we have? Well, oh, perfect timing, right? The old Snapchat, what are we having? Snapchat or something, WhatsApp, somebody. So, it's so confusing, you know, these, 16 and 20 and 30 billion dollar app companies. Zynga. Uh, yeah. All right. So here's the S and P. 
Thank you for sitting through it. All right, same thing again. Basically, the, the low below here, uh, what do we have for the low? 2100, which is fine. So the cash has P, and we have a fat bar. Um, it does have an ABC type pattern coming off of here. So just like we saw the larger world had a running flat, we may ha be having something of that going on here too. But uh, the next swing up here for next year, the targets are nice 2300 and uh, 2440. Um, as you know, I was only looking for uh, 22 to 2400 this year. I'm really not interested in what's left, you know, the, defensive wise overall yes the stock market's going to double here but i don't want to you know press my luck but those of you who add to winners that's when you make it okay i'm just playing defensive that's all uh and find it elsewhere i find my opportunities elsewhere right currency wise okay transports okay larger degree sideways pattern i like the transports here and now we're back up here again right Okay, so uh, if the economy takes and continues on, um, shippers, intermodal trucks, what I do notice on the way back from needles is that uh, the semis uh, to pass in through the way station in Arizona were lined up, this is five in the afternoon though, fought lined up uh, onto uh, the highway, the interstate. So, you know, one side I see I see a lot of trucks moving in on the downside um, you have what there was a chart that was passed around about the number of uh, big rigs being purchased and it's cratering well we, we've maxed it out it doesn't mean they're, they're not expanding you know if you're filling up trucks we have to be consuming right that kind of thing it's it's found its happy place just because it's dropping doesn't mean it's such a bad thing it does pretend though to uh, uh, recessions because you stop buying after you realize you bought too much <laughs> right okay so basically on here the, the pattern uh, you know go with it kind of thing personally I don't you know if, if you're in just let them run then okay um, but I uh, 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 I'd rather wait now for a pullback we had a pretty good pullback on here whatever but it's just it's one of those where you, even the stuff I like, I'm kind of shunning, you know, that kind of thing. But if, if you're in, you know, if you have some uh, uh, truckers and things of that nature. And also, you know, you have, you know, costs for airlines and stuff. Airlines are a goofy one, um, you know, and your truck, there's, we're going to see some sort of uh, inflation that way. Uh, wages, maybe uh, manufacturing costs, th things of that nature that won't be offset with um, fuel prices. Okay, uh, I think so. What did somebody say? Fuel prices are three percent of the cost for UPS. So uh, no, uh, but um, uh, I guess out of three, in theory, of the three, you want to be buying the Dow and then the then the uh, uh, the transports and um, uh, the utilities. You should be shunning them. Uh, this is on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Weekly here, basically, a larger sideways pattern. Uh, they will have to uh, find something to help out. I don't see it in gold. I don't see it in oil. I don't see it in, they're having issues with um, manufacturing autos going to Mexico. So free trades, you know, NAFTA is affecting everybody, but there are other offsets, uh, other new industries up and growing that uh, should provide uh, benefits here. Uh, but basically, I think that Canada is going to have difficulty with the commodities and also they faced uh, issues uh, from, I think it was 80 to 89 in the real estate market where Alberta real estate lost 40% in a five year period. Um, we all know about the insanity uh, 2013 on in uh, uh, Canada for the real estate so that may you know if everybody relies on you know this sector of the economy and it's falters it, it's a, there you go there's some trickle down for you <laughs> you know a lot affects a lot of people so but uh, uh, I like the, I just think this is just a bounce uh, for the year 
um, commodity with the long commodity bounce and it's over and, and Toronto will continue lower. Uh, Dow Jones and utilities. This is the weekly. Um, utilities have to face competition with return with paper and with interest rates moving. Utilities aren't a favor for for uh, the, the dividends. Okay, so it's competition. Um, I believe we may actually have some sort of all time high on here that we don't see. I will say forever. Okay. It's just the behavior of what I see in the, in the charts. That's just how I look at it. I can expound and, and talk about the peak, you know, or maybe Earth is peaked. I mean, I can go on and on and on. I guess there's a lot of time if the, the market trends to just sit there and, you know, watch things and just move up your stops every day. But the utilities are going to have grave difficulty here with uh, uh, competition, dividend-wise, free yield uh, with U.S. debt and then corporate debt and things of that nature. Also, if I'm right, in the winter is mild, not as much in regards to use. Uh, so they may have business issues also. And I don't expect any, you know, drought and or, you know, heavy usage of, of that uh, 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 till 2018, 2019, okay. Uh, but then you <clears throat> also have industry. Is this also telling us that industry, and there are charts out there that electricity consumption and stuff, but I haven't gone into that yet. That's too much information for Ken. I mean, I don't mind it. Just have to look at it. You know, where are you in a relationship to the last four and eight years? Wilshire, okay. The Wil Wilshire here is a total of the full cap, basically, of the United States stock market, okay. I look at that, to, to all the boats then are in the harbor, large, larger sideways pattern, t attempting to break out. The move would be here from 22,500 to 24. You can figure out the percentage wise, it's less than 10% or whatever, okay. Somebody pointed out to me, you know, you have, you know, a huge move, triple and quadrupling, you know, the last 8% or 10%. It is, like I said, it is mechanical. So you just buy, or if you're long, you hold on, you know, your core, port, core portfolio and put your stop underneath. But any reversal here, okay, because it's stuck in a sideways pattern, okay, of a larger sideways pattern. So wherever the breakout is, you're supposed to take it, put your stop underneath. All right, if we get a reversal here, I expect it to drop down. What are we talking here? To back to 2013 levels, okay? And it, it, I would expect it to be precipitous just due to the fact of what happened uh, uh, this last week with money changing hands both ways. Um, same thing again, here's Wilshire with um, uh, just some lines on here. Uh, same thing again uh, for the breakout. Um, uh, the pivots moved up, which is nice, and you're moving average here too. Uh, you could see though that I'd say the next time it breaks the red line, it's going to come further down. Okay, but you know, we'll know a lot more by uh, Monday close and Tuesday. You know, if we if we fall out of bed on Sunday, it's I think it's going to continue on uh, through the rest of the month, and it should be pretty hard. And it won't be economic related. It'll it'll be it'll be just market structure. Uh, here is the Wilshire divided by the VIX. So if stocks go up and VIX goes down, it would be, have a bias this way. Uh, here was uh, the previous week's low where we had all the put buying, okay? And then this is uh, when we had the bounce back. So we're back into an area like here and here and here that was uh, a previous high before moving lower, okay? So just a word of caution, a call buying on the flip side. You know, to, uh, last weekend it was put buying, now it's call buying. Uh, okay, so this is monthly. Okay, so these, this is your American uh, composite, and a lot of the miners and drillers and stuff are coming out of there, but this basically to me is a large sideways pattern with a bias towards the downside. So I don't see much refuge hiding out in, basically your miners and stuff. Yes, you have your copper. Uh, we'll get to that in the next video with uh, spot uh, commodities. That same thing uh, there, and that's it, right? That is it. Okay, so that was for North America. Uh, once again, the utilities. Uh, 
any bounce 640 would be a short and uh, uh, there's no refuge there um, uh, and the transports are nice but I you know you have your world-famous uh, the tide lifts all boats well um, I wouldn't go into the transports as a, as a counter cycle, cycle kind of thing here too. But if you think about it, if they're not buying any trucks, capital outlay, right? Uh, higher interest rates. So they th technically got themselves a pretty good deal uh, uh, for right now. Okay, OEX and the Russells and Russell again. Just wanna eyeball these real quick. So the mid cap futures. Uh, S&P again to 2100. All right, off to the next video.